as well as the show, the collection itself is poetic. Hey creative, I'm Sonia and Copycat is a channel where I teach as I learn about artistic growth in motion design. This video is about Alexander McQueen. You might be wondering, if this channel is about motion design, why is this video about fashion designer Alexander McQueen? When I see McQueen's work, I feel like it can be an amazing inspiration for character design, 3D modeling, and concept art. His work is rich in storytelling, history, politics, and poetry, making him an artist as well as a fashion designer. In this video, I'll go over common themes and inspirations for his work. Then I'll look more closely at three iconic and theatrical fashion shows. Before we start, please subscribe to my channel and click the like button to get more videos like these. Alexander McQueen was very provocative. He wanted extreme reactions out of his audience and used his fashion shows for performance art. The clothes served as a canvas and he told stories through his collections. The result are pieces, shows, and videos that easily fit within the language and methodology of art history. The themes in his shows evolve around mortality, time, and decay. In an industry that values the beauty of youth, he pushes the boundaries by referencing history of murder, genocide, and even rape. He documents history with his first collection, Highland Rape and Joan, taking his audience back to what the treacherous historic scenes must have been like. He also documents modern times in his collections Number 13, La Poupée, and Plato's Atlantis, where humanity is subjected to coexist with machines and climate change. His shows are social documents about the times we live in and how we got here. The status of nature is ephemeral, constantly changing and evolving, something that was once beautiful ages. Although I wouldn't say death is a big theme in his work, he seems to be fascinated in the process that leads one to it. Don't get me wrong, his work is super depressing. Beautiful, but depressing. It's as if he wants us to feel sad, but keep watching, which ties perfectly into the theme of romanticism and the sublime. The term sublime refers to a greatness beyond all possibility of calculation, measurement, or imitation. Romantic artists used the epic of nature as an expression of the sublime. Romanticism was an artistic, literary, musical, and intellectual movement that originated in Europe towards the end of the 18th century, characterized by its emphasis on emotion and individualism, as well as glorification of all the past and nature. McQueen references mythic images of chivalry, brutality, romance, ideals of heroic women and men in his tailored suits. He emphasized awe and wonder, fear and terror, which is a concept of the sublime. It's destabilizing and transformative. Sublime is the strongest of passions because it contains the potential for exaltation and transcendence beyond the everyday. The romantic in him asserted his creativity as an individual, becoming a hero artist who follows the dictates of his inspiration. McQueen reconstitutes the past into a postmodern present. He explores paradoxical relationships between life and death, lightness and darkness, and expresses what's buried in people's psyche, stuff that goes through your mind but that you don't want to fess up to. This leads us to the theme of love and beauty, which played a huge role in McQueen's work and life. McQueen found beauty in the unconventional. He had a fascination of abomination and messed with the politics of appearance. In the fashion industry that has a very strict definition of beauty, he reveals both the prejudices and limitations of our aesthetic judgments. In his show Voss, he points out that conventionally beautiful people look good on the outside, but they might not on the inside. The romantic in him says love has the power to transform something ugly into something beautiful. Love is propelled by subjective perceptions of the individual, not by the objective assessments of appearance. He details the agonies and ecstasies of love, involving instances that exceed our capacities for self-control and rational Comprehension. A central dichotomy in his work is the coexistence of man and machine, technology and nature. His shows had avant-garde installations and performance art to provoke powerful emotions. During these moments of mute encounter, we contemplate our primitive disposition in a modern world. In practice, he constructs pieces that require craft and technology, which makes us wonder, are we in a twisted heaven or a beautiful hell? In the last show before his tragic death, he streamed the fashion show online for an audience beyond the fashion industry. He embraced the power of internet for a show that was about a dystopian future and the reality of climate change. 
in the show number 13, his final piece comments on how technology dictates human behavior, although that technology is itself a human creation. McQueen often said his work is autobiographical. He pushed everything further by making it personal and stood strongly for imagination and free expression. This gave his work unparalleled emotional depth with a heightened sensitivity to feelings. His exposure of self and vulnerabilities imbues his fashion of dignity and humanity. I won't go into his inspirations in detail, but hopefully just by looking at these pictures, you'll see why these artists had such an influence on McQueen. He draws inspiration from the Chapman Brothers, Sam Taylor Woods, Joel Peter Witkins, Francis Bacon, Hieronymus Bosch, Hugo van der Goes. The Voss show in 2001 is one of the most iconic. The room was an enormous glass box with two-way mirrors. The audience could see their own reflections while looking out at the models, while the models could only see themselves, not the audience watching them. In this white, reflective, clinical room, the queen presented outfits that had very natural, earthy tones, which instantly created a strong contrast. In fact, the tones were ones that were reminiscent of decay, using greys, dark greens, and white. The most vibrant color he uses is blood red. The beautiful models wore white bonnets and moved in a way where they clearly looked disturbed. The clothes were complex and fantastical, with winding structures that complemented the simple architecture of the room. In this piece, the model walked around with birds hovering around her. McQueen loved birds. He was inspired by a feather, but also its color, its graphics, its weightlessness, and its engineering. Although here, they are not beautiful, but haunting and terrifying. This is an obvious reminder of the horror movie Birds by Alfred Hitchcock. For the model whose shirt is ripped open at the front, these birds are a constant threat and are now part of who she is. I would love to reproduce this outfit if I was to depict a tortured and disturbed character in one of my projects. This dress has panels from 19th century Japanese silk screen, an underdress of oyster shells, and a neck piece of silver and Tahiti pearls. At first sight, the dress is shiny and gorgeous, but as the model mouths the neck piece on the runway, we realize how dangerous the outfit is. The silhouette is very graphic and triangular. It's wider at the bottom and tighter at the top toward the sharp necklace. The textures are each very different, creating a beautiful blend of something terrifying and impossibly beautiful. Exactly the paradox McQueen was going for. This dress was created from razor clam shells McQueen found on the beach. The shells had outlived their usefulness on the beach, so he put them to another use on a dress. Then Erin O'Connor came out and trashed the dress, so their usefulness was over once again. I believe somebody got cut with the shells while dealing with the dress, once again reminding us how dangerous these pieces are. The work in this collection has a huge variety of shapes, a great reminder of how McQueen works in three dimensions. These outfits are never flat, but rich in form and architecture. In the middle of this clinical room was another, dirty looking glass box that seemed to be part of the decoration. When the show ended, lights came on inside the enormous glass case. The walls then fell away and smashed to the ground, revealing an interior filled with moths and a naked model on a chaise longue whose face was obscured by a gas mask. This is a reproduction of Joel Peter Witkin's sanitarium, something absurdly grotesque brought forth at an international fashion show. Is he portraying how these beautiful people feel on the inside? If I had seen this in person, I probably would have been confused and terrified, but that's exactly what he wanted. I quote, Ha! I was really pleased about that. I was looking at it on the monitor, everyone trying not to look at themselves. It was a great thing to do in the fashion industry, turn it back on them. Girl Who Lived in a Tree was a 2008 collection centered on a fairy tale narrative devised by McQueen about a girl who descends from a tree to marry a prince and then becomes a queen. At the center of the set stood a giant tree swathed in fabric. The collection was inspired by the British royal family, toy soldiers, and punk princesses. The first outfits have a dark melancholy about them. 
The color palette consists almost entirely of black and gray. For me, this piece is an expression of childhood fantasy and delusion. The headpiece looks like the skeleton of a peacock, and although it must weigh on the model as an outfit, it seems as though she's about to fly away. The princess leaves the darkness of the tree, meets her prince, and is greeted by the riches of the world. McQueen, who had spent the month in India, looked for the twilight years of the British Raj. With rich satins and crimson velvets, the models wore tight-fitting bodices and exaggerated ballerina-style skirts. There's a clear evolution from the first pieces to this one. The girl has come down from her fantasy world to ascend to a throne. This outfit reminds me both of the Pope and British royalty. This bag formed part of the final look. Its egg-shaped form recalls that of the elaborate Easter eggs made for Russia's imperial family. The Fabergé eggs, produced between 1885 and 1916, were an expression of the last years of excess and privilege from imperial Russia. The glint and sheen suggest luxury and opulence, while the outfit itself is devoid of humanity. We no longer recognize a human figure, nor is there anything natural about it. The girl has become untouchable. This outfit would be amazing for a royal character who is disconnected and unfazed by the world. Plato's Atlantis in 2010 was his last full collection. The entire collection was streamed live over the internet as a way of creating a dialogue between the designer and the consumer. It was presented against a large LED screen that featured a film directed by McQueen in collaboration with photographer Nick Knight and showed a woman mutating into a sea creature. This show was about how humans had adapted to survive in a futuristic underwater world by reverting back to an amphibian state. This collection predicted a future in which the ice cap would melt, the waters would rise, life on earth would have to evolve in order to live beneath the sea once more or perish. Humanity would go back to the place from whence it came. This metamorphosis dress is a juxtaposition of different fabrics. It crystallizes the moment of transformation from human to sea creature. To McQueen, metamorphosis has similar qualities to plastic surgery, but uses this hybrid dress to transform mentality more than the body. During this collection, he first presented the well-known armadillo shoe. His most celebrated footwear creation combined a claw-like menace with the beauty of a ballerina's emplant. Performance pieces on the world's catwalk kept with McQueen's love of theatricality, made the boots appear utterly futuristic. However, the exaggerated silhouette of the armadillo does have a historical precedent in the extraordinary form of 16th century Persian riding boots. On pieces for this final show, McQueen worked directly from the fabric without looking at his references. He would place an engineered print on the form and construct the pieces like they'd morphed out of the body themselves. He would create them on a body because clothes are meant to be worn. They're not two-dimensional things. They are something that has to sit and mold onto a human being. The final look was a jellyfish dress, where the shapes were curvy and the colors changed according to the light thanks to iridescent paillettes. The set of the show is also clinical with imposing presence of machines and technology, but the work is strongly inspired by nature. The prints are of insect, reptile and butterfly patterns with gorgeous symmetry and the hairdos are an extension of the shapes of the clothes. McQueen gives curves to the model's stiff shapes, playing with tight and loose cuts. He crafted the clothes, manipulated the space, and added a dimension with video, making this show an immersive experience for everyone involved. I can easily imagine these types of outfits for a cinematic science fiction movie where civilization has advanced capabilities to merge biology with high-end technology, but are doomed to live in hostile aquatic environments. I really recommend checking out the two blogs created for McQueen's work from the VNA and the Met Museum. I've put the links in the description. They're filled with beautiful, high quality images of his work, which would be awesome references for design. I hope this video has inspired you to think of McQueen while creating character designs, 3D models, or concept art. Please let me know in the comments below what you liked about this video and what you'd like to see more of. A quick note, before making this video, I thought I didn't understand fashion, that I just didn't get it. While researching McQueen, I found the YouTube channel Hot Le Mode, where Luke made me realize that if clothes you see on a runway are ugly as hell, it's simply because they're ugly as hell. 
Although high fashion is meant to be worn by very wealthy people, they are still people. Alexander McQueen took fashion a step further to create stories, emotional turmoil, and political unrest. All this to say, trust your taste. You're not a creative for nothing. Thank you so much for watching, and make sure to check out my other videos in the Artist series, and leave a comment if you have any feedback. See you next time!